Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about standing a wall, bracing a wall, and plumbing a wall. We're gonna go over the basics and just some important things to keep in mind to get your priorities straight when doing these three things. Okay, so we're gonna start talking about standing walls with a telehandler. Now, when we're building our exterior walls, we like to sheet them on the ground. We can do as much as a 50 foot run, 16 foot feet tall, and stand the entire thing sheeted and tie back. So it gets very heavy. So we like to use a telehandler. Now the way we use a telehandler to stand our walls is with these brackets here. We got this idea from, I believe, Lucky Dog Construction on YouTube. So definitely check him out. He's doing a lot of solo framing and it's sick. So the way these brackets work, is they have a three inch and one eighth gap between the plates. They slide under the wall here, just like that. And the reason that this bottom plate is short is so that we can use it on a two by four wall or a two by six wall. Now all of the weight is held on this bottom piece, but we put three inch structural down in the top and we leave it a quarter inch up because even though all the weight's on the bottom, when we stand this wall up, if it leans forward, the wall could slide out of the plate. So we wanna have it so that it can't slide out. And two three inch structurals in each bracket does that trick. Now, if you don't have these brackets here, the other ways you can stand a wall with a telly, first one is drilling a hole through your top plates, coming down about a foot on the stud, drilling another hole, and then on the other stud cavity, drilling back up through these top plates here. You have to do this before you sheet the wall because you'll run a strap down through those, through the stud and up the other side. That way your weight is actually on the stud, not on the top plates because the top plates can be weak if you don't have sheeting on it. So then you hook your straps up to your telly, spread them apart and lift your wall. Every time we lift a wall with the telehandler, we pull center of the wall and adjust for weight. If there's a header in one side, we'll shift it closer to the header so that the wall is balanced. The last way you can stand a wall with a telly that I know of is to take a board and screw it on top of your wall. You can, even after it's sheeted, you can screw it on here. Make sure you use structurals into the studs, really load it up with structurals. Then you take another board and screw it onto that board. Then your straps can loop over these sections here like a hook, and you can use that to stand it up. The reason we don't like this is because you have to get on the outside of the house to unscrew the board, which is usually way up in the air on a ladder or in a telehandler basket. So those are the three methods you can use to stand a wall with a telly. Now, if you're standing walls without a telehandler, just pure raw manpower, you can sink your hammer in here, and lift it up, peel it out, and keep going. Now, sometimes these walls get really heavy. So when we get it up to here, we'll slide in a sawhorse on each side. We'll probably have three or four guys lifting big walls. That sawhorse allows you to go down and get underneath the wall for standing up. And it gives you an insurance policy for if everyone bails, the wall's too heavy, it comes crashing down, it hits those sawhorses instead of killing your friend. Now, whatever way you're standing walls, be sure to be really safe about it because these things can get heavy and they will squish you. So now that you got your walls stood, the next thing you do is plumb your wall, which means to make sure it's perpendicular to level, straight up and down at 90 degrees. Now, when we're plumbing a wall, we need to, now when we're plumbing a wall, the only thing we're caring about is the bottom plate in line with the top plate. We don't put a level on the studs. We don't check the studs at all. We just care about the bottom and top plate because when we're building the wall, we're flushing the edge of the studs to those plates and it can get off. Studs can be crowned, twisted, whatever. You always wanna check from bottom plate to top plate. So with that said, the first thing you need to do is nail your bottom down. There's no point plumbing the wall if the bottom's not nailed where it's gonna be. Over here, when we're attaching this wall here to the exterior, before we plumb this, 
we have to make sure that this exterior wall is plumb this way. We call it shear plumb because the wall is shearing. So we wanna go down to the corner and check that this wall is plumb by putting the laser in the opposing wall corner. So once this wall is plumb here, we can then nail this wall onto it plumb. That order of operations is very important. You nail the bottom plate, make sure what you're attaching to is plumb, and then plumb this wall. Same thing continues down the line here. Before we plumb this wall going this way, we have to make sure that this wall is plumb this way, which means we have to make sure that this wall is plumb this way. So there's a lot of things because if you just laser up your wall or plumb your wall and it's attached to a wall that needs to move, when you move it, it's going to throw all your work off. So it's very important to follow this order of operations. Now there's three ways to plumb a wall properly. You have a plumb bob, which is a little metal weight attached to a string line. You have a plate level and you have a laser. If you want to use math to plumb your walls, you can, but it's not as reliable because boards can move and shift. So for a plumb bob, you have the little weight on a string and you hold your string at the top of the wall. And that point on the weight swings. Now, the reason this trick sucks is because of wind. You get any wind and you're gonna be fighting it all day trying to wait for a calm moment to plumb your walls, especially on tall walls. Now, the next thing is the plate level. And that is a level that has a little block at the top and bottom so that you can extend it out, put it directly on your plates. This is a very accurate way of plumbing. You can get it real close if you're good at reading a level. Now the third way, and the way that we use, is a laser. It's called a dot laser. Because you put it on your bottom plate, and you flush up that dot, and you're supposed to look up and see the dot up top. This is the most accurate way in my mind of plumbing a wall. With the green laser, it works in any light, any wind, any height of wall, real quick. And the cool thing about the laser is that if you're adjusting it with the brace, you can actually plumb it yourself by seeing that dot line up. Once that dot lines up, you just nail it in place. Summarizing all that, the order of operations is to nail the bottom first, then before you nail it to the existing wall, you have to shear plumb the existing wall. Then you have to plumb it from the bottom plate to the top plate, ignoring the studs completely. Plumb walls are very important because they keep your house the same dimensions all the way from the foundation up through the roof. When you're doing multiple story homes, it's important that everything is plumb so it stays the same dimension all the way up. Now we're gonna move on to talking about the different ways of bracing. There's a lot of different ways of bracing, but we're gonna cover like five or so, just so you guys kind of have a few options to work with. So feel free to watch through this video a couple times and get to know the different methods because you'll, you'll probably end up using them all. First one we have, is just a real quick brace. We have a board nailed on here. We'll nail it up top, and then we'll have our laser on the wall, and we can pull this wall plumb, and when we see that dot, we just nail it down here. We do a double block most of the time to allow for more strength. That way you don't have to cut the bottom of the board at an angle to get real good nails into this guy. But when you're nailing your block down, you always want to nail it right on a truss or a joist. Because if it's only in the three quarter, it's very weak. But if you go into a joist or a truss, it's super solid. Nothing's going to blow this wall over. A similar style brace is to nail down to your bottom plate. Now, this isn't as strong here because you're only nailing into an inch and a half. But if you put a nail or two along the studs here, it really holds this brace, keeps it from bowing and, and moving. Okay, this next brace is for when your wall is leaning in or out and you really have to fight it to get it in the right place. This wall we wouldn't use this on, but just to show you guys the example. You can see right here, our wall is leaning this way. So the laser is inset on the plate. So we're gonna take our board and we're gonna nail it up top here. Now, before we nail the bottom, we're gonna take another board 
and we kind of want to roll it here so that the corner down here has space to move because we're going to be levering it. Now we want to put two nails in, or three in the exact same spot. This acts like a, a lever to pivot this board on. Then you do the same thing in the middle here. You put two or three nails in the same exact spot. Now, this works way better on taller walls that are hard to push. Right here, it's kind of pathetic. But now you can get a lot of force levering this wall over here. You can see we're easily moving this thing around like it's nothing. This is more for huge walls. So you get this in the right place, holding it. Everything you got, watching your laser. And then you just tack it in. You can tack here as well to make sure it holds. And then you just pop this guy off. So this next brace behind me here is called a spring brace. And we don't use it that often. Um, it's basically only for pulling walls towards you. Now you wanna grab a a longer 2x4, um, doesn't have to be 16 foot, but that works great. And you lay it on top of the wall on the flat, and then you come down here to the bottom, and you want to nail the end on a joist or a truss, whatever you got. You want to make sure that these nails go in pretty well on that joist. It's, it's a weird shot at an angle, it doesn't work super well, but it's a trick to have in case you need it. And you come over here on the wall, and you nail it down through the top plate. Now we got our laser set up here underneath this doorway and we're trying to pull the wall in. So we'll take a board here and push underneath the spring brace until you can see that laser. There we go. You can see it's bending the board up, which is basically shrinking the distance so it pulled that wall towards, and now you can see the laser on the edge there. You can use a hammer to tweak this board in real sensitive like, and then we just nail it down. Some toenails in the floor. That doesn't have to be on a joist. Now we're perfectly plumb. I don't really ever use this brace, but it's a good one to have in your tool belt. So the next place bracing gets tricky is on concrete. Now a cool trick for this is to line up your brace with one of these cracks here. So if we're trying to plumb this wall here and we don't have a subfloor to brace to, you can nail your board and then you take a couple blocks and you put them down here on this concrete crack. Now you take just a normal framing nailer with three inch nails and you aim for that crack. Now, it looks like it didn't go in, but if you hit this crack, the nail actually bends in there, makes it incredibly strong. Um, just to prove to you how strong it is, when we're pulling out these boards, sometimes, if you get a good one, it will pull the nails through the board. So it's, it's pretty strong, surprisingly. And if you're a good aim, you can get it solidly on there. You set these nails if you're really trying to brace it and throw another block on top and that gives you a good part to nail to when you're nailing your brace three inches. The other thing you can do when bracing on concrete is if you have a wall on each side of a garage you can put a board into the opposing wall and just lay it flat on the concrete and that will give you a nailer on the other side. We won't do this for you, but hopefully you guys get the picture. Sometimes the optimal place to brace your wall doesn't line up with a crack. So you can take a longer board and put it between two cracks, nail it in, and then brace anywhere in the middle, either perpendicular or in line. If you guys are getting any value out of this video, please subscribe, because we're doing a video about every skill it takes to frame a house. Okay, last but not least is our most common way of bracing, which is a turnbuckle. And the reason we like these is because they're very easy to adjust in or out. And you can crank a lot of force with these. 
One time we actually put a turnbuckle straight up and down and lifted up half of a roof on by lifting a beam. So these things are really good for if the wind is blowing your walls a little bit after you leave the job site, you can come back and put it exactly plumb, even if it's adjusted. These also work real well for bracing if you're building around concrete because you can put a stake through them into the dirt, pound a stake in, put a nail through, pound it all the way down so that nail's touching, and then you can really reef on it, getting that wall plumb. Something that we do when we use these is we use deck screws to put them in. And if we're in a high wind area where the wind is hitting a sheeted wall, we'll put a structural screw down below. Um, most of the time when we're nailing the top of these, we just use nails because it makes it really easy to just unscrew the bottom and then pull the nails out. That way we don't have to climb a ladder up to unscrew it. We can just rip it out from down below. In high wind areas, you have to be really cautious when you're bracing your house, especially if the walls are sheeted. I have personally watched a three inch structural screw snap during a windstorm. We were running through the house, just putting braces on everything, trying to keep it up. So make sure that your walls are braced really well because you do not want to lose them. Another thing you can do when you have really long braces on big walls is to put an L on this. You can screw it or nail it down to this board because on these longer braces, especially if you have like a 30 foot brace on a 25 foot rake wall, they will bend a lot in the middle, which will make your wall do this. A side note is that the wobble is what takes houses down. It's, it's not a big gust of wind. It's Oh, it wobbling back and forth for like an hour, slowly working those nails up and out. So you don't want your walls to wobble at all. That's why you put this brace on here and it stiffens that board up really solid. Another thing when bracing your walls is that two thirds of the stud is actually the strongest way to brace a wall when you have wind coming onto it. You don't want to brace at the top because it has so much force directly on it. But if you brace it two thirds up the wall, it basically balances out that wall against the wind. It keeps it from pushing it into the house. So in summary, there's a lot of ways to brace your walls, but it's important to go to a solid framing member down below. And when you're plumbing it, you just wanna make sure that everything is secure and isn't gonna move when you're done. Okay, hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of this video and didn't get fire hosed with information but we covered different ways of standing walls, things to pay attention to and be aware of. Um, plumbing walls, like that you need to go off your bottom plate to your top plate, not the studs. Uh, our tolerances for plumbing walls are a quarter inch on every wall and an eighth inch on any wall that is getting cabinets or tile. With that said, we try and get everything perfect. Our tolerances are only if something's really fighting us. If we're more than a quarter inch of lean, we're gonna spend hours tearing apart everything we need to to get it within tolerances. It just makes the whole job go easier if things are good. And lastly, we covered a bunch of different ways of bracing. Always remember to brace it well, don't let your walls wobble, and make sure that's gonna last through a heavy duty windstorm. Be sure to check out our other videos and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.